Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited you're here. And if you're new here, welcome on in. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I do a lot of Q and A's, so I answer a lot of questions over there. But honestly, I noticed y'all are getting a little nosier and it was getting a lot to put on my IG stories all the time. So I figured today we would just do a big Q and A here on YouTube. You guys are asking for life advice, you're asking about my relationship, you're asking about modeling, you're asking about my weight. And we're just gonna answer it all today. So let's pop in and let's see what the hell you guys wanna know about my life. Okay, we're gonna start with one of my most asked questions, which is how did I get into modeling? And honestly, I've tried to make like a bigger video talking about this for years and just, it never turned out well. So we're gonna, we're gonna answer it today. So the short version is I got scouted on Instagram when I was 19 years old. Yeah, it was 19 because it was right before my sophomore year of college. So the long story is I was at the University of Oklahoma and I was just so unhappy. Like, this isn't for me. My major's not for me. I know I want to be in entertainment somewhere and just, this is not gonna get me there. But I expressed that to my parents. I was like, y'all, I'm, I'm really unhappy. I really want to be in LA. And somehow we like struck a deal that they would help me go out there for one month. I think they were hoping I would flop and I would just do nothing and I would make no friends and I just w would do nothing. It'd be a waste of time. And I'd go back to college and just like, do that but i was doing anything i possibly could to make money i got on a website called model mayhem which i would like so not recommend and basically on that platform you can just talk to other creatives and i shot with anybody who would take my picture out here it was very sketchy and like probably not safe at all but i did it and i learned i really like modeling so after i went home i was like the modeling bug bit and i loved it and i think i have a trajectory here i'm gonna practice i'm gonna do more shoots and then next year i'm gonna try to get signed and so this is in like august of 2017 and one of the brands I modeled for went viral. And it was terrifying. And but basically my face was everywhere. It was on the Ellen Show. It was on the BBC. It was everywhere. It was on Teen Vogue. Like it was insane and very overwhelming. And I just had this moment to myself where I was like, well, option A, I forget this ever happened. And I just don't tell anybody. And I, or B is I run with it, I guess. And so I ran with it. And then shortly after that, um, my first agency reached out to me on Instagram and I, I was signed. And that's a very unorthodox way of doing things, but it does feel very meant to be. But I can make another video about how to like actually start modeling because don't do not do whatever I did. It was, it was not good. But I will say when I first started modeling, I was so broke. I was so broke, honestly, until like 2021. <laughs> Like I was making no money modeling. It's a very, very expensive business to get into, especially if you don't live in LA or New York already. Like, oof. Okay, another modeling related question. How do I know if I'm good enough to model? Modeling's this very weird thing where you can be pretty and still be not a good model, or you can be not like traditionally really pretty and be an incredible model. So it's really just about like learning the craft. It's not just standing there being like, it's movement, it's your presence on camera, and that's just a practiced and learned skill. So if you just, you practice in front of the camera, you have your friends take your picture, you practice in front of the mirror, you'll you'll get better at it. And I, I truly think it's one of those things that anybody can do. You just need to have that like internal spark. You know what I mean? You have to have the drive, you have to be able to take the rejection because there's so much rejection in this industry and you have to be willing to work really hard. But I'm a true believer anybody can do this. Okay, here's a nosier one. How did you and your boyfriend meet? Well, Mr. William and I met in college at the University of Oklahoma. Our freshman year, we lived across the hall from each other and the night before classes started, I was yelling something really stupid and he didn't know anybody yet and he poked his head out of the room and like looked down the hall and saw me and my friends just being really loud and stupid and he came over to say hi. And we just ended up talking all night and he was wearing this all camo outfit, which would typically give me the ick, but I don't know, he was, he was really funny and we just got along really well like immediately and so we added each other on snapchat and then we realized the next day we had our first class together and i had not mapped my classes yet i had not walked it at all i did not care and he had done that like three times so i messaged him in the morning and was like hey um do you know classes and he was already sitting there in class but he walked back to the dorm and like met me outside and walked me to class we spent the next like two weeks just constantly together and then we were dating and here we are a hundred years later and yeah we've been together for six years now so it's been a while <laughs> okay another william related question what does your significant other think of you modeling i personally would not be able to cope with it 
That's interesting because when we started dating, I was not a model. And so we kind of had to figure that out together. And like, number one, figure out if this was a thing I was going to do and like how expensive it was to get started. I will say there was definitely a learning curve on both of us. But I mean, I was starting out in a new industry that's definitely has a lot of like stigmas attached to it. But he got with it and he's super supportive of it now. And he lives out here in LA. And he's also kind of related to my industry. He works in advertising. So I will say it makes it a little bit easier because he gets my job to an extent and I get his job to an extent. Another thing we kind of had to unpack in that is this idea that like as a partner, you own your partner's body, which I don't I don't really vibe with, to be honest. I don't think he does either. We had to kind of release the ideas. Like he doesn't get to tell me what to dress like or what I can post or things like that. Like I'm respectful of our relationship, but at the same time, this is also my job. And so he knows like if I'm posting something, it's because it's an ad or because it's something I'm passionate about or something I like. And I'm not gonna do anything like disrespectful in a relationship because we have clear boundaries, like a healthy relationship. So. I'm sorry if that was a roundabout way of explaining that, but that's kind of the gist on that. How do you stay positive and keep loving yourself? Um, that's a loaded question. That's a lot to unpack. One thing to note is I'm not always positive. Um, I know I really struggle with anxiety. I've struggled with depression and that has definitely affected like how I am sometimes. But in my mind, I think also because I've had struggles with anxiety and depression, I try to really appreciate when I'm feeling good. And gratitude has been a really good practice for me in getting out of my head and help combat my anxiety. Because honestly, it's like a little debilitating. <laughs> like I have a really, really hard time sleeping um, because I'll get so anxious and in my head about like the most random things. Like the other night I was like, what if I get murdered and they put me in a freezer and I couldn't stop thinking about that? Like, huh? Or I'll truly be awake being like, my friends hate me all of my friends hate me and they don't. And like, I know that logically, but um, the interest of thought to be interested of thoughting. So I think just with all of that in context, I try really hard to big, remind myself what I'm grateful for and the good things in my life. And just kind of document that for myself, not just be for social media, but like when I was really sad the other day, I rewatched the birthday video of Brie and Gia surprising me on my birthday. And I was like, oh, I have friends and I am loved and everything's okay. And so I just try to really ground myself in the good things and the happy things, but also like make sure I'm drinking enough water, make sure I'm going outside and getting sunshine and also making sure the people who are around me build me up. I had a couple friends at one point who just every time I was around them, I left feeling awful, like drained of life. Like I could see no positive in myself or anyone else, just how they spoke about themselves and other people. And I took a step back. I was like, whoa, I'm not feeling good here. And so I had to remove myself from that friendship and I felt so much better. So just also being, being conscious of your mental health and being conscious of who you're around and really trying to surround yourself with positive people, especially for a lot of us who grew up in bigger bodies and we grew up like going to the grocery store and seeing all these magazines about how bad our bodies were and things like that and being bullied and seeing mean comments online and not having your size being available. And you just, you feel like a monster basically. And that's how I felt growing up. Social media is a really big one of looking at who you follow. If you follow anybody who makes you feel bad, unfollow them, mute them if you know them in real life and making sure you follow people who look like you and you can see their beauty and be like, oh, that looks so great on them. Oh wait, why can't that look good on me? If they look good in a crop top, why wouldn't I look good in a crop top? We look very similar. And also following really diverse people online. People who look nothing like you at all ends of the spectrum who aren't just super edited like the celebrity kind of thing we're fed all the time. It makes you appreciate normal people and what normal bodies look like and you just feel more normal with yourself. You know what I mean? Again, it's a lot easier to see the beauty in yourself when you can recognize the beauty in others at all shapes and sizes, not just the Kardashians. Granted, they are so beautiful, but that's not the only way beauty looks. Cool, cool. God, that was so long, but hey, you look good. Don't change. A quick and easy one. What is your favorite perfume? YSL Libra, I am in love with her. Another great tip I think I saw on TikTok, or my friend Drew told me, honestly, I don't remember. Whenever you're on vacation somewhere fun, go buy a perfume there and you'll forever associate that perfume with the vacation. So when Drew and I were in Paris back in March, we found this little perfume shop and I got myself a perfume and I got Willa Cologne and it was just so magical in there. And every time I wear it, I'm like, I'm in Paris. So highly recommend doing that too. Ooh, we have a little advice. Okay, I really like this dude. We've hung out four times now and I feel like it's going nowhere. What do I do? 
my first thought is be like we're done but also if you're still really into the guy just be honest with how you feel like I feel like so much of the time we just waste time trying to like play games and have this banter that like maybe one person isn't getting like oh my god when Will and I first started dating like the first before we like knew we liked each other I was like dropping all the hints I was playing I was doing everything in my power to let this man know like I'm into him and went straight over his head straight over and finally I was like I really like you and he was like oh you do <laughs> cool so I mean, maybe he's just not getting the picture and maybe you need to thoroughly explain it to him. But if you're not feeling it, don't waste your time because your time is really valuable. Some more dating advice. Okay, how to be confident dating as a plus size woman. I get scared and can't go on the apps. Okay, I wanna preface with I haven't been on the apps in like six years. Being plus size, we just have this immediate feeling that we're gonna be rejected because of our size. And granted, I know that there is a lot of that out there, but I think internally we do a lot of that for ourselves. Let's put the idea out of our heads that you're not like the hottest thing on the market. Just imagine yourself like a $4 million brand new home that's just been renovated that everyone wants to go see. Everyone's on Zillow. We're sending this house to our friends like, oh my God, this is so sick. Like, I don't know if any of that was coherent, but basically you're dope and you don't deserve to be treated like some like dingy apartment. Your size in no way, shape or form determines your worth. Just show up as you are. You don't need to have a disclaimer of, oh, by the way, dot, 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 I'm bigger. Just include photos of yourself on your profile that are what you look like. And when someone swipe right, they're swiping right on you. And if for some reason things don't work out, that's a them thing, not a you thing. But I know how hard it is, especially when society's told us for so long that we are bad, but like, we're not bad and we're beautiful and we're sexy and we deserve to be desired. Just show up as yourself, put yourself out there and be safe. But like, what's the worst that can happen? Someone says no, like who knows? Maybe your next swipe is gonna be the person you're meant to be with. So. You never know. But our next question is the best fashion advice for girls with a bigger bust and love your style. Well, thank you. Since you like my style, my biggest recommendations for girlies with a bigger bust like myself are get a really good bra. Like get bras that fit you really well. They'll give you the lift that hold you in well. I can link some of my favorites down below. So get really great undergarments. And also corsets are your best friend. At least for me, I have a really hard time like, if something's a little baggier or something of it will just make the rest of my body look a lot bigger because it's kind of drapes off because my chest is my biggest point on like my upper body. So having something that is a little bit more form fitting that lifts you just shows off your shape a little bit. Incredible. So some of my favorites are from PLT, Adore Me, Urban Outfitters. Those are kind of the current favorites. And another necessity for me is Pensy Shapewear bodysuits. They're wearable shapewear bodysuits. I think I still have a coupon code with them. I'll put it down below as well. That just, she's changed my life. So I don't need to wear a bra with it and I'm still just, I'm held up, I'm snatched and they're incredible. I actually modeled for them in my last vlog and you can see on their Instagram, there's a lot of me in them. They really hold me up really well. They're just, they're truly doing God's work over there. Like, love you, Pinsy Shapewear team. Okay, essential basics always to have in your closet. Um, a really great pair of jeans. They're super comfy and then like a sexier pair of jeans. So two different pairs. For me, my comfy pair of jeans is my good American, um, good 90s jeans. They're like the sweatpants of jeans, basically. I've been currently loving a basic pair of trousers or even like more of a cargo trouser. Just something that's not denim to wear on bottom is definitely a must. And then just basic bodysuits that you feel really good in. So again, my favorite is from Pincy Shapewear. I also really like my Skims one. Ooh, also a leather pant. That's an essential to me. The Abercrombie ones hit because if I'm going out and I have like five minutes, I'm going to throw on a bodysuit, my leather pants, and a cute pair of heels, and then I'm done. Comfortable pants are really the MVP here, and then a nice snatching bodysuit just hits. It's like a Negroni Spagliato with Prosecco in it. I just fully gave myself the ick there, but here we are. <laughs> oh, how much do I weigh? I've been dodging this comment for years now. Um, honestly, I don't really weigh myself very frequently. Um, as I've talked about online before, I had an ED for a long time, so I'm just careful with things like that. Like I don't wanna let my brain get obsessive with things, but currently my body sits around 210 pounds roughly, and yeah, I'm cool. I'm trying to destigmatize weight for myself, but I will say it's a weird question to ask. So so like maybe don't ask anybody that again, but I know it was a girly asking me. 
but also I don't think weight really means that much like muscle height fat all those things have different things to do with your weight and it can't really tell you anything about my health or my body so if you're looking for my measurements to help pick out sizing for things there is a TikTok and there's a reel with all that up there and also on my modeling agency's websites it's already there okay this is gonna be our last question of the day what is the best decision of your life and the worst decision of your life? My worst decision of my life was one I made in the first grade. I was at the Lincoln Memorial with my family in DC and um, my mom said, oh, go run over there, I'll go take your picture. And me being an idiot child, I ran over there and smacked my head into the wall and like turned my head around. It was very dramatic, I had blood everywhere. I cracked my head open and I still have a scar from it. And that I think was my worst decision because it just had like, a life scarring effect like I have a scar on my face now and every makeup artist is like where's that from and I always have to explain and it's just like a frequent thing and I was so insecure about it growing up like I wanted bangs so badly just to cover it up my mom wouldn't let me get them so I've also never had bangs which is a weird thing about me but yeah I always wanted to cover it up so I just ended up being like stupid and secure of my forehead for a long time so that was not a great decision that had a life altering effect. But in general, I'm a believer that like every decision you make gets you to where you are. So I'm sure if I didn't make one stupid decision that like a hundred other things wouldn't have happened and I wouldn't be here now. So I feel like it all kind of works out for a reason maybe, maybe. But my best decision ever was what I talked about earlier when I first started modeling and that brand I worked with went viral, my photo was everywhere. And I was like, well, we can bail or we can persist. And I chose to persist and I don't know. I think about that version of myself a lot, like 19 year old Julia who had no clue about anything whatsoever and who was just so bold. And I want to embody her a little bit more. So I think that was my best decision because none of this would have been possible without that version of myself being really brave. So that version of myself always just makes me very proud. We're ending on an emo note today, but I hope you guys enjoyed hearing all of my answers to questions. I know I didn't answer all of them, but thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free if you have any questions for me, you can leave them on this video too, or if you have any requests of my channel, drop them down below, I got you. And yeah, I'm so excited you guys are here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, not to be this girly, but please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys again really soon. So thank you guys so much and I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a great week.